delighted to be joined today by Flo. Flo, how are you? I'm good. I'm very well, thank you. Good, good. Did you have a specific light bulb moment or something when you found that niche in the market and you began to build your own brand? Is there one thing you can actually put your finger on? Like, it's weird. I don't think it was a light bulb moment because sometimes when I think back to when I started my business or I was interested in starting my business, mm. I was just so young and I, I felt like so passionate about what I was doing. So it kind of felt like everything was like a sign, like being like, yeah, Flo, you've got to do this, yeah. um, as, a, as opposed to like a eureka moment. So whereas now I'm like, why did I so intensely want to do this? Like, it's the <laughs> hardest thing in the world. But then it was like, yeah, this makes sense. Like, you've got to do it. And along the way, kind of, did you have doubts? Or, or it was always like, OK, this seems the logical next step and this is where I'm going? Um, I definitely think as time has progressed, <laughs> doubts have definitely creeped in, but... I feel like I try and look at it as like a challenge. So it's like, okay, like, cause usually a doubt sets, like sets in because I'm facing some sort of difficulty. Yeah. So I try and look at it as a problem and I'm like, okay, so how do like I problem solve and how do I find a solution to this? Um, because otherwise I just feel like it's just so easy to get stuck in a rut sometimes. So you're a cosmetic scientist. So I suppose, does yeah. that mean you're a much more, kind of the way you think is much more logical and kind of, um, you work through problems rather than maybe kind of, especially in the field you're in, in terms of beauty, kind of how we, how, how we perceive, when I say we, the outside world perceives the beauty industry, where it's more about feelings and um, emotions. Yeah no, yeah, no, there's definitely, I am definitely into like more of a formulaic process <laughs> and I'm really like into like my processes and problem solving. And like, I say like, whenever I describe cosmetic science, I always say like, it's like, pharmacy but you're formulating cosmetics instead of formulating medicine so and I think when every when you think about medicine and you think about you know um health it's mm. a very serious thing right like you wouldn't want a, a pharmacist that didn't know what they're doing or someone in the lab making your medicine who didn't know what they're doing so when it comes to cosmetics I kind of take the same approach of like this you know I'm I'm solving a problem here mm. um not as serious as like dealing with like you know a medical disorder but beauty and how you look and how you feel about yourself like affects every single person so yeah I'm definitely yeah, very sciencey and how I think but, uh, do you think that's something that almost kind of it's the next progression for the the beauty industry in terms of how they present themselves it kind of it is to do with how kind of people I suppose people's well-being and mental health and how they perceive themselves and therefore it is much more than aspirational um industry and actually is a kind of a scientific way to make us feel better about ourselves yeah definitely and I think I think it's not even led by the industry I think it's led by the consumer I feel like now like we're in the like google generation where we literally google any and everything like we see a spot on our forehead we google it you know we've got an ache in our neck we google it so I think there's a thirst for knowledge people want to know um why things are being made how they're being made who is making them so like traditionally like my role within the industry would be a very backseat role um and all you know the fancy beautiful clever marketing um kind of comes to the forefront and that's what people see whereas I feel like now there's actually a consumer demand for the industry to be more transparent and people want to know what's in their products how is it how does it affect them um what ingredients are being used where where do the ingredients come from and so I it, I feel like it's led to the industry having to be transparent and having to care more about people's like emotional well-being and also and also their health because the the, the products that you have in your in your beauty products whether it's your face cream or your toothpaste mm. like it impacts your health. So tell me kind of I suppose it neatly leads on to STEM and tech but how is it going and what's next? What's our next big challenge? I think for me, the thing that really excites me about the future of STEM is inclusivity, getting more people of colour into STEM, getting more women into STEM. And the more diversity that there is in STEM, like the better the solutions that we come up with. Um, and I think like historically, um, the science technology, engineering and maths industries have been very male dominated and in the West, very white male dominated. Mm. So 
think the more like diverse spaces we have in these spaces, the better solutions we have um, on a global scale. So that's something that, yeah, I'm super passionate about. And, and, and really do, you, do you see that happening or are we just at the starting point? I think we're still at the starting point. I think, unfortunately, if you go into schools, um, specifically um, speaking to like young girls, um, and you you know ask them about what their aspirations are, very few want to go into STEM careers or see it as a place for them because in media, still a lot of the STEM roles you see are like um, fulfilled by men. Mm. So I feel like there's um, a responsibility, I guess, for like female scientists and all scientists, to be honest, to actually say like there's space for you in this industry. Like if you work in a lab and you look around and you see, oh, everybody in this lab looks like me, then that, that's a problem. And actually think about who is missing and how do we get, um, you know, the missing demographics into this industry. Society as a whole, is there stuff we non kind of lab technician, lab folk can do um, to promote it, there's kind of there's ways we should be speaking better about it. I think just like following your interest, whatever your interest is, like whether you're interested in plants, animals, cars, there's a science to it. Mm. Um, and I think if you just show a personal interest in how the things that you love are made, then you are exploring the science. And I think the more that we do that, and especially when it comes to like young people around us and they see us taking an interest, whether it's, you know, taking your kids or your niece or your nephew or your friend's kids to like a science museum, um, you know, just to understand like, well, how the world is made or whatever their like specific um, interest is. I think you do your part in just kind of expanding their minds. Tell me what's in store for MDMM flow and what's next for you personally? So for me, I'm like developing, constantly developing new products, um, really excited about where the beauty industry is going. Like the last, um, well, coming up to two years now <laughs> with the pandemic has, has done a lot um, in the industry, some good, some bad. Um, and that's left me with some creative challenges around like working on our supply chain and trying to get more things made in the UK. Um, and also just trends around beauty have changed as well. People are very much more into like self-care and DIY-ness. So creating products that speak to that as well. So, so you're excited and looking forward to what's coming up next? Oh, absolutely. Flo, thank you so much indeed for your time. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you for having me. You too. Take no care. No worries. Cheers.